Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib and we've got another unboxing today, actually two unboxings. This stuff just came in from 8-Bit Doe. This is a clip for your mobile phone to attach an Xbox controller. And 8-Bit Doe has a new Xbox branded Bluetooth controller for Android. And the timing of these could not be better because a little later this week, Project xCloud is going to be available. And this is a controller you can use with that. We've looked at a lot of these 8-Bit Doe controllers in the past. They're among my favorites. And today we're going to unbox this and then we'll have a review of these soon on the main channel at lon.tv once I can get into Project xCloud. Now these did come in free of charge from 8-Bit Doe. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this unboxing, nor is anyone reviewing it or approving it before it gets uploaded. Now you might be asking, what's the difference between the Xbox branded controller and the typical 8-bit dough design? Well, there's a couple of things, and some folks in my live stream that were watching pointed these out to me. The first is that you get an Xbox button layout uh, versus the standard Super Nintendo layout, which is more Switch compatible. So although the controller looks very similar, there are some differences. So you have uh, your buttons mapped here according to the Xbox layout. You have an Xbox button now, which we didn't have before. And then you've got the select and start buttons here labeled as your traditional Xbox buttons. And although this is for Android, I would imagine this will work with other controllers as well. One other thing I'm noticing here is that the uh, triggers here feel like they're analog versus digital on the other version of this controller. Uh, and you've got some nice uh, shoulder buttons here in the same spot. Looks like you got USB-C here. This can connect with a wire or you can connect wirelessly via Bluetooth. Uh, the D-pad feels really nice on here. We'll do some more testing of that when we do the full review. And then of course your control sticks here are clickable. Now because this is designed for Android phones, you have a clip here that you can use with your Android phone to mount the controller. And it's nice to see all of that included in the box. So we can get this uh, situated on our phone here and see how it all comes together here in a second. I've got an Android phone we can play with. But before we do that, uh, let's unbox this mobile clip. Now this clip is not for this controller. It's actually for your wireless Xbox controllers so that you can connect it up to Project xCloud. So let's take this out of the box real quick. And those of you who watch unboxings are probably not happy with the way in which I am opening this box. But here you can see we've got the clip for the phone and the controller. And it looks like there are two different attach points here as well. So we'll dig into that here in a second. All right, so we took a look at the instruction sheet that came with the clip just to see what these two clips do. So clip A that will be attached to your clip when you take it out of the box are for Xbox controllers made uh, before 2020, and I'm guessing for a portion of 2020. So this would be most Xbox One controllers will fit with clip A. But all of the newer controllers that are coming out on or after 2020 will likely require clip B. So if you have a newer controller that you just got, uh, you might want to try clip B and see if it fits first, and then you can easily just unscrew clip A here and screw this one in and you're good to go. Now I've got an Xbox One S controller here. Uh, this I know is the older one. And what you do to get it mounted here is you just get the top portion positioned like so, just like that. And then this bottom portion here will latch on to the two clip points here underneath the uh, connector for accessories. And what's nice is it leaves that area clear. So if you have something plugged into the bottom there, it will still fit and it really clicks on nicely and it holds on pretty tight. Now you have two ways to adjust it. So you have this uh, point here, and if you loosen that up, you can adjust the uh, whole clip up and down. And then the second point here, when you loosen this up, uh, will also allow for additional adjustments here. So you have a couple of different axes here to work from. So I'm just going to, or axes I should say, I'm gonna tighten this up real quick and we're going to attach my two phones that I wanted to try out with this. And by the way, you could put an iPhone in here too because the iPhone supports uh, Xbox controllers. So we'll first attach up my Pixel 3a phone. And in full disclosure, this came in free of charge from Google a little while back. And I'll just tighten up that lower one first. Oops. And now you can see I can still adjust the top. And once I get it to where I want it to be there, I can just tighten that portion of the clip up as well. And we're good to go. Pretty good. 
Now, I've also got a bigger phone. This is the Pixel 4 XL that Google sent to me free of charge as well. And you can see that one fits in here too when you still have some room to go here. It seems like it holds on pretty good as well. So nice solid clip. I like the way it feels. Plenty of adjustment here. So I think that's going to be a fun thing to play around with. Now the clip that comes with their own controller works very much the same way. You've got all of the same adjustments that you had before and it will connect just like the other one did. You just snap it on there and you're good to go. What's nice is that they do leave the USB-C port available here so you can charge it without having to detach the clip. Uh, one of the issues I've had with my SN30 Pro Plus clip that they sold was that it covered up the USB-C connector and you had to disconnect it every time to charge it. But here you go. And then we can put our phone on the top of it here. And it does get, you know, this is a similar issue that I had with some of their other controllers that look like this, the SN30, is that it does get a bit top heavy, especially if you have a big phone attached to it, um, because there is nothing below for your hands to hang on to. And let me just tighten this up here to get a better representation of it. Um, so it does feel to me a little bit uncomfortable because you're feeling this downward pressure from the top. And that's one of the things that I really like about their SN30 Pro Plus controller is that you have these hand grips that really balance things out better. So I would have loved for them to have made the new controller here for the Xbox kind of match this design, just given that uh, these have always been a bit top heavy when you have a phone attached. But we'll play around with it a little bit more in the full review, and I will give you my thoughts very soon on the main channel at LON.TV, so stay tuned. This channel is brought to you by the LON.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Tom Albrecht, Chris Allegretta, Mike Patterson, and Bill Pomerantz. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.